Next is a torus that is vertically arranged on a rigid wall. This torus is a right angle triangle. The members which are joined at point C are 45 degree to the vertical. The other angle of the torus is 90 degree. Considering this is an isosceles triangle at angle of 45 degrees, the members are loaded horizontally at pH and vertically at PV. Here, H is an abbreviation for the word horizontal and V is an abbreviation for the word vertical. Now, a load is applied vertically downward and another load is applied horizontally rightward. In this problem, we need to find the horizontal and vertical displacements at the joint point C of the members, respectively. The cross section and Young's modulus has common values S and E, respectively. The length of the torus members each is L. This is the overview of this problem. The concept to solve this problem is similar to the previous problem. Firstly, we consider the horizontal and vertical balances of the forces. Since there are two members, we can refer the loads and axial forces acting on the two members. This is the flow of the solution to this problem. So, let's start by considering the balance of forces. We are considering the balance of forces in the horizontal direction as shown in the illustration. We are focusing on the load balanced with the external force pH in the horizontal direction. The axial force from the members AC and DC acts as shown in the illustration. The members AC is pulled downward to the right. This joint point is then pulled upward to the left with respect to the member. So, the axial force PAC of AC is acting upwards to the left with respect to this joint point. Similarly, the axial force of BC, PBC, acts down to the left with respect to this joint point. We are going back to the argument about the balance of forces that are shown in the illustration. As in the previous torus problem, the joint point is assumed to be a ring. The illustration above shows all the forces acting on this ring. The horizontal external force is pH. The vertical force is PV. Then, the reaction force pulled by the member AC is PAC and the reaction force pulled by the member BC is PBC. Assuming these forces are balanced, we develop the equations about the balances of the horizontal and vertical forces with respect to the illustration. The horizontal component of the PAC, PAC divided by root two, and the horizontal component of the PBC, PBC divided by root 2, are balanced with the horizontal load pH. So, the sum of these two forces is balanced by the pH as the equation. We are also considering the balance of external forces with PV. What are the forces that are balanced with this force? The vertical component of the PAC, root 2 PAC, acting on the upper left relative to this joint point, 
on the downward component of this PVC, PVC divided by root 2 is balanced with this PV. So we get the equation. Considering that the unknowns are now PAC and PVC, we solve the equations for these two. Now we can determine values of the axial forces acting on the two members as the following. Once the axial forces are obtained, we can apply the same procedure as in the previous problems to solve this problem. Stress is calculated by dividing the load by the cross-section area. The strain is calculated by dividing the stress by the Young's modulus. The elongation of the member AC is the product of the strain and total length of the member L. The same is true for BC. Stress is calculated by dividing the load by the cross-section area. The strain is calculated by dividing the stress by the Young's modulus. The elongation of the member AC is the product of the strain and total length of the member L. Now, we have the following equations that gives the two members elongation, lambda AC and lambda BC. The next step is to find the amount of deformation using the geometric relationship the same as in the previous problem. Now, we start by considering AC. From the calculation so far, AC is stretched by lambda AC. The movement of lambda AC is generated at the point C, which is the tip of AC. We are thinking about how this point moves. This is a very long truss member which moves like a compass. We can assume that C dash on this line that is drawn vertical to AC. It means that the point after the stretch moves along the direction vertical to AC. We have argued about the behavior of the member AC. Note that the movement of a long truss member is almost along the direction vertical to the member. Strictly, it draws a curve. But since the member is long, we can approximate that the member moves along vertical direction after elongation. Next is about BC. When BC is extended by lambda BC, point C comes here. After then, if the member BC moves like a compass, it moves along the vertical line. So, as a result, the point C comes to the point C dash, which is the intersection of these two lines. We are reviewing the motion of point C. The original member AC is firstly stretched by lambda AC. Then, similarly, the BC is stretched by lambda BC and moves to C dash. It may have been a little bit complicated explanation, but it just means that the joint point C moves to C dash. Then, the amount of the movement is the sum of the values calculated exploiting the trigonometric ratio. Considering that AC and BC intersect horizontally at 45 degrees, the amount of the horizontal displacement is given by the equation. By substituting lambda AC and lambda BC that we have calculated, we get the horizontal displacement. 
Next is the vertical displacement. Now, the value downward is taken as positive and the opposite direction is taken as negative. We calculate the displacement of point C as the sum of the displacements. So, we subtract lambda BC divided by root 2 from lambda AC divided by root 2 as the equation. As a result, we observed that horizontal displacement is determined only by pH. It may have been obvious. This behavior means that although we are pulling the structure horizontally, and the structure does not move downward, since the structure in this problem is vertically symmetric, the vertical displacement is determined only by vertical loading. The approximation used in this problem may have been a bit difficult, but the first step to understand this problem is approving this approximation. AC extended by lambda AC. At this stage, the tip of this long member is fixed with a pin allowing the movement at the point. So DC is also stretched by lambda BC. In this case, it can move on this line. We can determine the point C dash, which is the location of C after the deformation, by drawing these two lines. After completing these processes, the displacements have been decomposed into triangular ratios, and each component is added together. This is how we derive the horizontal and vertical displacements.